Halloween, the season of the year in which you dress up as scary things and scare your friends and your family, and also the time of the year in which you, chess player, have the chance to use the Halloween Gambit. You could use it in any other part of the year as well, but uh, yeah, it's Halloween, come on. In today's video, I'm going to teach you a little bit about the Halloween Gambit. Although it is a Gambit, and at the end of the day, a Gambit is pretty much, by definition, if your opponent plays well, the, all the best moves, you will get a losing position. So just take that into account before you start writing down your comment. David, this is the worst. I lost 10 games in a row. Well, it is a Gambit. If your opponent plays well, and you, you're, you know, 2,500 above, then this is, yeah. But if you're 2,000 below, which is very likely, no offense, that's where most people are, then this is a very good chance to surprise your opponent and, you know, make the most of the Halloween season. So the Halloween Gambit is e4, black plays e5, double king's pawn, knight f3, knight c6, natural moves, defending the, defending the pawn, but we will see about that. Knight c3, knight f6, and just before your opponent thinks, oh, this guy, he's going to play d4, some boring line, or bishop b5, sorry, bishop b5. But now you surprise them with a the Halloween Gambit, which is knight takes e5. The 9 takes e5, you're going to say, David, that's not defended. Well, that's the point of a gambit, actually. Very likely, a gambit is sacrificing something. And the point is that after d4, white has the center. And after this, black is going to lose tempos over and over. These knights are going to get attacked by pawns. And that's going to make black underdeveloped. So that's the core idea of the Halloween gambit. Now, there are three ways black can play this gambit. Or respond to this gambit actually. Knight c6, and after d5, knight e5, this is the old main line. Black can play knight c6, and after d5, bishop b4, getting back some material, giving back some material in exchange for activity. And black can play the modern and the best according to the engines, knight g6. So we will go through those little by little, and we're gonna start with the main old line which is knight c6. Knight c6 is not the best. White plays d5, attacking the knight. For example, if you go knight b8, all of a sudden this is a catastrophe. e5, you go knight g8. Every time black goes queen e7, you're going to note notice that there's a common motive of going queen e2. You unpin this pawn. You're still threatening e takes f6. And black will eventually go have to go back on g8, on g8 and the queen on e7 is horrible. And the queen on e2 is not that bad, by the way, because you will castle queenside either way. So, for example, bishop f4, you castle queenside, and you're doing very well. You're down a piece, but black is underdeveloped, and there's no easy way for, for black to develop. So, e5, knight g8, same story, bishop f4, this is horrible for black. Once again, you did sacrifice a piece. It was for a pawn, first of all, but second of all, black is underdeveloped. It looks like Y just got one, two, three, four, five, six tempos out of nowhere. The so black has to go 95 or bishop b4. We were going to talk about that. But 95, you continue pushing f4. Black has to go 9 g6. If 9 e g4, you play e5. And black cannot move this knight because knight queen takes g4 is hanging. Once again, queen e7, what do we play? We play queen e2. We unpin now. And now we're attacking those two knights. I didn't know those arrows were there. But I'm glad that my past self drew those arrows by the time this position was reached. Um, because that's that's a clearer way for you guys. But either way, jokes aside, 9g6 is the best move. And then you continue pushing. e5. Black has to go back. 9g8. Once again, what do you play? Queen e7. You play queen e2. So 9g8 has to be played eventually. And here is the very important moment. You don't want to let this slip away. You have an ultra center. An amazing center but if you allow black to play d6 all of a sudden your center is going to get undermined this bishop is going to get out and it's not going to be so easy so in this position you play d6 you kill black's development now all of these pieces are kind of stuck so d6 you play black has to take e takes d6 and it's very easy to go wrong as, as black here black has to play queen f6 this is the best move but what happens if black plays queen b6? This is now a mistake. From a better position, because as I said at the beginning, if black does play the right moves, black will get a better position. But from a better position, queen b6, now this is not so easy for black. White plays knight b5, strong move, threatening a fork on c7. 
thanks to this pawn on d6, also protecting the pawn on d6. And black has to already play king d8. This is the only move to not lose right away. But this is already, you know, we're already talking about not losing. Um, after king d8, white continues to play in this dynamic style, f5, attacking the knight. Knight has to move to e5. And you continue attacking, developing and attacking bishop f4. And here black has two moves. Both There's one, one only move to not die. And the other one, which is knight c6, which kind of loses... Um, on the spot, which actually, what was, there we go, queen d2, and it's a silent move, the The threat is very clear, it's either bishop e3, but there's also 97 ideas, and all of a sudden black is lost, black is lost because black has no development, you can't go a6, as I said, because bishop e3 is in the air, if you go queen a5, there's a very nice line, queen takes a5, knight takes a5, bishop b6, and after king e8, you don't take, but you play knight c7, and this is a, this is a, yeah, horrible i mean this is a nightmare i mean yeah so black is ultra lost in that position that's why black has to play a6 directly to which white still has a small plus even after black defense with a6 after knight c7 attacking the rook queen b4 check the only move to stay afloat once again this is all these are all the only moves for black queen d2 you defend this this bishop if you had moved the king let's say this is horrible so queen d2 and after qu the queen trade you're gonna say david we're trading queens and we're down a, a bishop sorry a, a knight what why is why are we doing this the point is that now the rook and the knight are attacked at the same time you can save both of them so black has to play something like bishop takes d6 the only way to survive as black i repeat but after uh, knight takes a8 this is a small plus for white white got a rook on a8 if you do manage to take this knight, knight out, you will be up an exchange. And uh, the rest is a game. And you had this amazing position out, out of playing the Halloween Gambit. How did you do that? Well, let's go back to uh, d5, knight e5, f4, black plays knight g6, e5, knight g8. We know all of this. And after d6, c takes d6, e takes d6, black's best move is not queen b6. This is kind of difficult after knight b5 this is actually already equal a small plus for white but black has to play queen f6 and after this don't don't think this is hopeless white can still pose trouble after queen e2 check so you play queen e2 check black has two choices king d8 or queen e6 we're gonna start with king d8 after this you play knight e4 you attack the queen let's say queen e6 and here you have the very strong idea you know, you want to play knight g5 to attack the queen, but queen takes e2 is in the air, so you play bishop e3. This strong idea comes with a little tactic. If a queen takes e4, you're going to say, well, we're, we're losing even more material. But there we go. Bishop b6, you take the queen, you're winning. So bishop e3, you're threatening knight g5, and black has to be very precise. So, for example, let's say black plays knight f6. Now you play knight g5. Sorry, uh, yeah, knight g5, queen e8. And after castle's queen side, black is stuck. Sure, these two knights are out, but these two bishops, therefore these two rooks will never come out. And this is actually pretty tricky to play as black. So, after queen e2, black has to play queen e6. But still, after knight b5, it's not so easy. You're going to say, well, we're trading queens. All of, our, all of the venom of the attack is out. But after queen takes e2, bishop takes e2, Black still has to address this knight c7 threat. And after king d8, which is the only way to stop that, you play bishop e3, and all of a sudden a7 is weak. If you play a6, similar idea. You saw this before, bishop b6 is a catastrophe. So black has to play b6. And after you castle queenside, black once again has to respond to all white's threats. It's very annoying. Black has to defend, 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 find only move, only move, and only move after only move. And only now... <laughs> Sorry, I said that oh, so many times. Only now, black has to once again find rook b8, which is the only way. But after knight takes a7, this is complicated. White has two pawns in exchange. Black doesn't have any development. And you, you can continue pushing pawns and, and, and try to, you know, a4, b4, maybe try to create a pass pawn over there. So this is pretty complicated. That's why now we can think, well, black is actually a little bit in a tough position after knight c6 and d5 knight e5 that's why people went for the second line i mentioned so out of the three lines we've looked at knight e5 but now we're going to look at bishop b4 
This is known as the Pin Pinsky's move. Someone named, an international master known as uh, Pinsky's played this for the first time. Or recommended it. I don't know. I think recommended it. So after bishop b4, you're giving back material, but it has a very good reason. The reason being that you're going to take on e4. You're not going to take back. In fact, this would be transposing to, in a ridiculous way, to the four knights variation. You know, if you, we go to back to all of these, all of these moves, knight f6, if you go d4, takes, takes, bishop b4, we would be transposing into this. Do you see? It's amazing. But black played knight c4. And this is much better than transposing to the four knights variation for black. Now white can try queen d4. This is still asking a question, what do you do, black? Your, your knight and your bishop are attacked. This is not very easy. But black has the very strong move, queen e7, defending both of them and preparing to have a discovered attack over here. White has to play bishop e3, protect that, preparing to castle. And after black castles, you play bishop d3. And we're going to stop here because it's still complicated. The main line goes knight takes e3 because the knight is attacked. If you go bishop takes e3, b takes e3, and you have to still do something about the knight. So knight takes e3 is the best move. b takes e3, bishop d6, and after this and castles, you know, it, you, maybe you're slightly worse as white, but you play the Halloween and you didn't lose. So that's pretty nice. But let's go through the very concrete... And the most challenging option for white. Or the most challenging to play as white. Because if black plays knight g6, that means your opponent very likely knows what they're doing. But still, you have some tricks that I can suggest to you. If black goes knight g6, you play e5. You push the knights once again. Queen e7. This is a common motive. We've seen this before. Now... We don't play queen e2, we play bishop e2, which has the same idea. It has the same idea of blocking the, the pin, or undoing the pin. And after knight g8, now you don't castle. This is very important. Now you have to... We, I, I'm going to introduce you to this second idea, which is h4. And h4 is very powerful now, because this knight is the only minor piece black has out, and you want that as well. You want to push that knight once again with your pawns. And this is very magical. This is the magic, the essence of the Halloween game. And you're just pushing pawns and attacking minor pieces. You want h4, h5. And this is already pretty tricky for, for black. For example, if you go knight takes h4. Now you have this other idea, knight d5. This is one of the problems of having a queen on e7. You have knight d5. And all of a sudden you have to go back. And this is complicated. So black does not want that. Black goes back knight g8. And then you play bishop c4. Here we have one. Two, three, and four moves. After every single one of those moves, you have something to make black's life as miserable as you can. So if black plays c6, you play queen f3, this is the idea that we were talking about. You're threatening mate, so black has to do something about that. If black plays queen e7, this is a mistake. You go castles, and your threat is 94, 96, and game over. So black is pretty much in trouble here. That's why black goes d5. Only move to get an advantage. You take en passant. Pretty nice to play that. And now your opponent plays bishop e6 once again. If you play some black knight f6, this is tricky. This is not easy for black. Because now you play queen e2 check. You can't block on e7 because there's a pawn on d6. So black has to go king d7 and the king is exposed. You have some compensation there. That's why black has to play bishop e6. Now you don't have queen e2 check, of course. And after d5... This is the best move for white. After d5, black has to find so many accurate moves, starting with knight e5. Of course, if black were to move the bishop away, you just take here, you have a double attack on d7 and on f7, so this is a problem. That's why knight e5 is the best move. You play queen e2, moving away from the attack, and once again, black has this only move, knight takes c4. There's nothing else that could protect both the knight and the bishop at the same time. If you take on d6, for example, you just take the bishop uh, with the queen or the or the bishop on d6. The queen e2, knight takes c4. White continues to attack. d takes e6, the best move, the best try. And once again, black has to find knight takes d6. There's no other way to defend this knight. For example, this knight, if you play b5, yeah, e7, why would you do that? Or d7. All of these things with these two pawns, you won't let those two pawns alive. So close to the king. Why would you do that? So, knight takes d6. 
You play bishop f4, you're trying to castle queenside and get counterplay. And actually, this is where I think most people will go wrong. If black plays something natural like queen knight f6, then you're lucky. You're one of the lucky ones. It means that your opponent may have looked at this before, but they didn't re recall the theory correctly. And after queenside castling, you're just winning. Because bishop takes d6, this is pinned. Um, you have e takes f7 ideas at some point and a queen c4. This is horrible for black, at least not as good as the other ones. Black has to find the very strong move, queen f6. And only after this, you start seeing your position crumble a little bit. So I'm just going to recommend you the best moves that you can try to be tricky and to be as resilient as you can. So you take on d6, you're, you're playing very dynamic chess, you're, you're losing the game, but you're not letting yourself just crumble right away, you're, you're moving. Like, you're, you're getting hit, but you're still trying to make things complicated and crazy. So bishop takes d6, played by black, you play knight e4, forking these two guys. Queen takes d6 would be, a, would, would be now good for white, all of a sudden, because the knight takes d6, you can't take back because it is spent, so you take back material, finally, that you sacrificed, plus tax, because knight takes b7 is there. So black has to find queen e7, and after this, you take on, f uh, on f7 with check, king takes f7, and you have one last trick you can f try to be lucky for, which is queen c4 check. If black were to go king f8, now this is horrible after queenside castling, and all of a sudden, sure, you do have a, a piece as black, but rook h1, this is a little bit of a dangerous initiative, and when I say a little, I think, and I mean, this is very dangerous for black. Black has to play queen e6, and here you play the tricky castle short side. Not queen side, by the way, because of bishop f4, but short side. David, you just blunder your queen, no! Nine sixty six. And once again, this is now saving the game for white. Because, well, first of all, the king is exposed on e6, so this is slightly better for white. Let's say black plays king g6. Um, even though you do have equal material, actually, no, you don't have equal material. You do have an extra pawn. So this is the magic of the Halloween game. That, that pawn you took on e5 at the very beginning, now you have a better position, better endgame. But of course, black is not going to fall for that, or if your opponent falls for that, you're happy, but if your opponent doesn't fall for that and plays bishop e7, then finally... You play queen d3, and you hope for the best. Good luck. This is very tricky. I mean, knight f6, knight g5, you still have this trick, but of course, black. Okay, black will either play knight h6 or something like that. And maybe you can, you can, you can hope for this king to be exposed. Maybe rook f1, and you play with the idea of knight g5. This is not very easy. So you still have some tricky tricks up your sleeve, but this is objectively losing. So that is c6. If black were to play bishop b4, the Pinsky's delayed variation, you also call queen f3. And as you're going to quickly notice, black only has one reasonable way of preventing that. Queen takes f7 idea, and that's d5. If black were to play queen e7, which is always an alternative, you always go h4, h5, and your opponent's life is a little bit more miserable. So d5, you take on d5 with the bishop, you're still threatening f7. Black has to do something about that. Once again, if queen e7 or queen d7, you go h4. So bishop e6 is the best move. And after this, you play bishop takes b7. All of a sudden, bishop takes it is a threat. Bishop c6 is a, is a threat. Um, h4 is a threat. You're going to castle short side, may go d5. This is very difficult for black to play. And after something like rook b8, bishop c6, king f8, you play bishop e3. And as I said, you're going to castle short side. Try to go for d5. You're going to claim that this king on f8 is going to be misplaced and hope for the best. This is objectively winning for black, but it's difficult to play in practice. That's why black doesn't generally go for bishop b4 either. So c6 and bishop b4 are tricky. They are winning for black if you play all the accurate moves. But if you truly want to play and have a comfortable advantage as black, you have the two options, d5 or d6. So if d6, white plays queen f3, bishop e6, and now queen takes b7. David, did you not blunder the bishop on c4? There's queen c6. And not only that, but you can't play queen d7 because queen takes a8. So you ruin black's king castling and you take on c4. 
That's why bishop takes e4 is a mistake after queen takes b7. Black has to play knight e7. Knight a to e7, I should say. And here you have more one, one more trick, knight b5. You attack on c7, there's only one move once again for black, and that's rook c8. So black is constantly defending. That's the advantage of playing a gambit. Black is constantly defending, and you continue attacking d5. Here's one another test, sorry. Black, if black moves the bishop to f5, let's say, this is already pretty bad after e takes d6 and queen a6, which is a very strong move. It's attacking on d6. Black has to play something like knight g8, which is horrible. And you're underdeveloped with black, right? And by the way, rook takes e4 runs into knight takes d6. So that's why black has to find the only move, knight takes e5. And only after this, you kind of start bailing out with d takes e6, knight takes e4, and knight takes a7. You know, you're, you're getting some pawns. You will take on f7 eventually, and after something like this, you play queen a4, you play f4, you cancel short, you push pawns, and you hope for the best. You will take on f7, you will ruin black's king side, uh, sorry, castling rights. You, you're hoping for the best. But once again, this is not the best to play as black. This is still tr tricky. You, you wouldn't be safe. You wouldn't be comfortable as black if you were going to go into this position. If you want to play this as black, my recommendation is that after bishop c4, you don't play c6, you don't play bishop b4, unless you really memorize things. You don't play d6, but you play d5. And d5 is the, bigger, the biggest test. And there's really not much to be done. You're going to take on d5 as white, bishop takes d5. Now black develops the knight with a tempo, this is very, very important. And after bishop g5 pinning this, black goes not h6 directly, but c6 first. H6 is a mistake, because now you have queen f3, threatening f7, and if black takes, of course, you just, yeah, this is, this is very bad news. There's some mate over here. So black has to play c6 first, and after bishop b3, only now you play h6. Reason being that after queen f3, black is no longer getting checkmated. It looks scary. But after queen d6, there's no, nothing. You wish you had knight b5. So you play bishop b3, you have to drop, ba drop back. This is already a bad sign. And after knight f5, all of a sudden you're seeing that black is threatening to exchange pieces, not, not something you want to do when you're down material. But not only that, just getting the bishop out and castling. And as soon as your opponent castles, all your activity and initiative is gone. And I know it sounds very depressing, but this is objective. Now, that being said, in a blitz game or in a bullet game, you cancel short side. You hope for something like this, where all of a sudden you have all the activity in the world. F7 is under fire. You can play bishop e6 as black, because queen h5 is winning a piece. But of course, black, after this, plays um, something along the lines of bishop b4. And here you just hope the best for the best after something like knight e4. You try to play c4, d5, f4. Maybe protect the bishop first, that would be a good idea. And yeah, that's 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 all, all for me. Halloween Gambit, it's 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 okay for a one move surprise. But if your opponent goes for this knight g6 line, it's very likely that they will know and they are going to play something that they know and they've seen on the internet in a video like this. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, any suggestions, if you think that I messed up in anything. Please let me know. Hope you enjoyed the Halloween season. Subscribe. I would really, I would really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice day.